Welcome to Daddy's Money Garage. Before we get into the subject of today's video, give me a minute to give a little bit of explanation. Here at Daddy's Money Garage, we consider ourselves more of an entertainment channel than a technical one. We're not experts at anything verifiable. I know stuff about engines, and John, you know a lot of stuff about electronics. I've been building computers since I was 12. But we don't have, like, the paper history or any kind of accolades to show what we know. In my mind, it's better to just give no advice rather than to give advice that might get somebody in trouble. And the thing is about the automotive YouTube community is that your average YouTube viewer does not really know how to cross-reference anything using Google or uh, common sense or maybe asking somebody else. I said average YouTube viewer. Not you, because you're subscribed to Daddy's Money Garage, which puts you like well above average. Well, with that being said, let's get into today's video taught by an actual expert. Welcome to class, everybody. Pay attention, because there's going to be a test. How are you going to give it over the internet? We'll make it multiple choice. People cheat on those anyway. This is John, uh, Sabrina's dad. Uh, not the normal John, the hipster one. This is the one that's smart. John's really gonna love that joke. Today, we are doing what? We are gonna actually uh, try educating you guys a little bit. We'll show you guys how to solder some wires together if you have to do any electrical connections. I'm just now realizing that that forge is probably creating a ton of background noise. So maybe we just need to shut it off and freeze to death. All right. Tell the internet, what makes you qualified to do this relatively simple electrical task that I don't know how to do? I have actually been teaching electronics and electricity for uh, various companies I've worked for. Uh, total, I've taught over 600 something students. I'm actually ASC master certified, so there is a little bit of true background to this video. You are qualified in a lot of other things like welding. You actually did the welding on the jet and I'm sure the internet thanks you for that because that car has totally laid down everything that it claimed to do. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, junkyard. <laughs> yeah, junkyard. That's about it so far. Explain what soldering is for people who don't know. Soldering is a way of hooking two wires together using a lead-based material. We're going to melt the lead into the copper and it's going to mix and create a chemical bond between the copper and the lead base in there and it gives you a solid connection for your electricity to flow through. Anytime you gotta connect two wires together, you're gonna wanna solder it. All your circuit boards, this is how they connect the microchips onto those circuit boards. There is a rosin core and an acid core solder. You're typically gonna use your rosin core solder for all your electrical connection. Your acid core solder is gonna stick to your plumbing. Is there anything stronger than soldering? Anything for electrical connections, like butt connectors, any kind butt of stuff? Butt connectors are basically the worst thing you can put in. They are quick and easy, but they will not hold up to what a solder connection will hold up to. Well, considering that most people in the mechanical community that works on cars uses butt splices, I'll put your email down below so they can send you the hate mail. If you're up underneath your dash, you're gonna get away with that. If you're gonna be outside underneath the hood, you're gonna want these heat shrink connectors, but if you don't have the right crimper for these, these don't work all that well. The other one you can use is a non-insulated connector, which will do one of those for you. And then regular old heat shrink. You wanna get the good double wall heat shrink. Uh, in this case, they call it a uh, marine heat shrink. This has a nice glue inside of it that gives you a nice waterproof seal after you've done your uh, soldering joint. This is the kind of stuff that we used when we redid all the wiring in my 65 Plymouth. Yes, it is. I say we did it, it was pretty much just you. So it was. <laughs> you did stand there and watch and hand me tools as I needed tooling. I helped. It's like shake and bake. <laughs> oh, that's already on fire, so we're doing good. So, so we've got a solder nine laid out. We've got solder. And we've got something called helping hands. Just a little tool, some alligator clips. It's gonna help hold the wires in place. If you're on your vehicle and you're hooking the wires, Typically, once you hook them together, they're gonna to stay put. So we're not worried about that. Some wire strippers, some crimpers for crimping, and then we're also gonna show you how to do it using a little butane torch. Soldering, a lot of people think it's very hard. It is actually a super simple process. Once you have some basic understanding of it, it goes very easy. I'll start you off with a classic solder using a soldering iron and some wires. So we're gonna take and strip back almost a half inch of the wire, because we're gonna do a twist connection. Strip back the wire. Classic way of doing this is to take and lay them right beside each other, twist them together, 
And this is where the good old shade tree boy will take and fold this over and wrap it with electrical tape. Come on, guys. You like your cars a little bit better than that. Give them a little bit of love and solder it. I like mine not on fire. Once you heat up a soldering iron, you're going to want to tint it just a little bit. And what that is is adding a little bit of the liquid solder to it as it melts. Liquid transfers heat better than just air. So now I'm going to take and hold that to the wire. We're going to heat the wire and we're going to melt the solder to the wire, not the soldering iron. So as that heats up, we're going to take and just hold the solder on top. And it's going to just take and suck that solder right in. And the connection is done. It's that simple? It is that simple. Now that we got that done up, we're going to take some heat shrink of the right size to fit over it. Slide that down on there. We're just going to use a regular old cigarette lighter. We're going to heat shrink this down. Start in the middle. As this stuff heats up, it'll shrink. We're going to walk it on down this way. And what you're looking for, if you have it shrunk all the way down, you will see this glue start to come out. When that glue comes out, you know you have a good seal on that side. Move the heat back the other way. It's going to shrink on down. Now on this end, we're going to take and crush it and get that glue seal to come out the end. That is a very good watertight splice. I have heard this rumor that you should not put a direct flame on heat shrink. Is that true? If you put a direct flame to it, the only thing you're going to do is to actually burn the outside of it. And you'll see it does take a whole lot of time to actually start burning the outside of it. And if you do that, you get this little chalky stuff on the buildup on the outside. If it's good heat shrink, it'll do like this one here. It gets hot and spongy. If it's cheap heat shrink, it will melt and catch fire. We can do this one with the torch. Now, here's the key. If you're doing this on your vehicle and this is your wire you're going to splice together, you always, always want to slide your heat shrink on first. Uh, yeah, I know that. I've run into where I've had to make electrical connectors before, like little eye terminals and stuff, and I've put it on and crimped it, and then you can't get the heat shrink on it. Yeah, if it's an end connection, you can sometimes slide it over the terminal, but on these, you want to slide it over first, and then we're going to take and run the wires together and we're going to twist them in the middle again now we got our heat shrink on there and a little twist in the middle this is where we're going to use our helping hands to hold this if it was on your actual car you hopefully you'd have a way to hold that in the air the key here when you're doing this one is how much heat you're going to throw to it a lot of guys want to take and run that torch all the way up high you don't have to do that with most of your modern solders we're going to take and cut that torch back to about minimum just enough to keep it going. Take and put it right in the middle. And as you heat that copper up a little bit, you're gonna take and touch the solder to it. Keep heating it. Move your heat so that you're not melting your solder, you're heating the wire. There it goes, it's starting to melt in. The solder will actually move to the heat. So once you hit the right temp, it will suck that solder up and you're all done. So when it sucks that up, it's actually filling in the gaps between the strands right yes it's becoming one solid piece of metal now slide that heat shrink back down find center we'll just use the torch again this time you want to keep it a little bit further back and run that torch back get that nice seal all the way around get that glue to come out that end start back to this side get that glue to come out there you got a nice waterproof solid connection so that one is done and good that one is done and that's how you do it with a torch yep a lot of people wonder how strong this is i know you guys that have done this on your car with buck connectors you would probably never pull against your buck connector but you will literally break the wire before you break that soldered connection that's impressive how strong that is i need more wire so we're going to go with a what they call uninsulated buck connector so the advantage to using the uninsulated buck connector is you're able to crimp these on and they will hold the wires in place for you. We can use soldering iron or torch, and we're actually going to use the torch on this one. Here you want about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch. You can use a lot less wire stripped off on this connector. First things first, Yeah. cut we our heat shrink. There we go. Now we're going to take and slide on our connector. You want just a little bit of wire showing so that once you crimp it on and you solder it, you can make sure your solder penetrated it. So we're just going to take and give it a nice little crimp to stay on there. We're going to insert the other wire into it. And again, you just want that little bit left over. We're going to take and crimp that one in there. And nice thing is these connectors have a little hole right there in that dimple. And that hole is where we're going to put the solder to it. What we're going to try getting on camera here is with the torch and using this uninsulated butt connector, you can see it as a dull silver color. 
When it becomes hot enough to melt the solder, it will become a shiny silver color, and that's when we know it is hot enough to melt the solder and make a good connection. Get just a little flame going there, and as we heat it up, we're gonna just put the tip of the blue to it, and right there, you see that temperature change, and it went to nice and shiny. Now we know as we add that solder, it's gonna melt all the way down to the wire on each side. Just a little more heat, we are done. Solder connection done and over with. Slide your heat shrink back up once it cools. Heat your heat shrink up. Your connection's done. You make everything look easy. <laughs> this is easy. A lot of guys are just scared of it. This is the reason they don't fix their cars the proper way. I feel personally attacked by that statement. Well, good. You ought to. Next step would be we're going to slide that heat shrink back down on here. And again, heat shrink it down. Another solid electrical repair. I'll try to break that one, though. I broke the wire. My connection stayed put. I actually ripped the wire out of the insulation. So, so that's just a testament to how strong that is. Yes, you guys want to solder your electric connections. Anything you're doing in your car, solder's the best way to go. A little bit of solder and heat shrink, minuscule tools that we have here, you're good to go. You do really good at explaining stuff. I guess that's that's uh, good because you you are the training director for your company. Um, so. I am a manager for, yes, of training from the company. I don't know what better source you could get this kind of info from. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Anybody who wants to thank John, I'm going to put his email down here below so you can email no. him directly and not me at all. <laughs> Catch y'all in the next one. Just put comments down. Austin will <laughs> share the comments with me. Oh, you'll see them. Thank you all. <laughs> this is not a good idea. <laughs> Which one does it? We're going to take and turn the tank on. So you're going to open this valve here. This is the regulator screwed all the way out. Now gas is on. You ready? Yeah, I guess. This forge was built with YouTube instructional videos. Oh, you, well, you better hurry up. The fireball's getting bigger. Oh, God. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> That's all of my arm hair gone. Again, that's just great. Woo, you guys ought to smell that. I wish you two could smell this. I'm gonna go to the hospital now.